Hey guys, and welcome to Let's Play Harvest Moon Hero of Leaf Valley. A game that I've actually been wanting to do for a while now, but other projects kept coming up. But yeah, released for the PSP in 2010, in North America at least, Hero of Leaf Valley is a remake, kind of, of Save the Homeland. When I say remake, I mean they pretty much took Save the Homeland and improved it in every way possible. So yeah, this is probably the definitive version of that, at least that type of game. So, let's get started. I'll discuss more about the plot and the goal of this game once it actually comes up during the actual storyline. Because unlike most Harvest Moon games, this one does have a definitive, like, bad ending situation. But it's actually really hard to get a bad ending in this game. But here's our main character. Our weirdly faced main character. I don't know what it is about his face. I think it's the fact that he doesn't really blink that much. But sometimes he looks really derpy, like right here. And yeah, just like most Harvest Moon games, starts off with a dead grandpa. And he left us a farm. A farm that's going to be torn down for a Funland amusement park in two years. Well, might as well go take a look before they tear it down. Also, this is a PSP game, so there are going to be low times. They're not too bad for the most part, but there are just a lot of them in between every single, like, small area. But this is the farm. It looks like it has seen better days. Yeah, unfortunately, since our grandpa died, the farm is kind of on the barren side. We got ourselves a barn here. It's empty, but we can get cows and horses in this game. No sheep, weirdly enough, though. Only cows and horses. Well... A horse. Uh, there's the chicken coop, also empty. We're not really starting off with very much, and this is the farmhouse. Surprisingly, pretty nice farmhouse for something that's apparently been abandoned. Uh, we got ourselves a map to the village. We'll be taking a look around the village later. Over here is a bookshelf. Yep, bookshelf. That's like all the tutorial stuff. And we have ourselves a TV. We'll be using that to check the weather every single day. But yeah, that's pretty much all we have in there. We also have a place to store our tools and a bed, obviously, to sleep in. Also, we're infested with Harvest Sprites. You know, the usual for a Harvest Moon game. Hi there! So yeah, five minutes on the farm and we've already captured ourselves a Harvest Sprite. I mean, we could, but we did just move here. Oops. But yeah, this is the main conflict of the game. We need to save this place from being torn down and being turned into an amusement park. I don't know. Should we help them? No, we should help them. And here comes the Harvest Goddess. I like her look in this game. The wings are kind of a nice touch. Alright, so let's put our name in. I'm just going to stick my name in. There we go. And we have a couple of questions to start off with. These will actually determine like our starting like relationship values with everyone in town. It's not that major of a start uh, difference though. Like, a couple of days of gifts will balance everything out eventually. So yeah, puppy is abandoning the rain. I am going to take it home because it's a puppy. There's also trash on the ground. Uh, we'll pick that up. And there's money on the ground. It's mine. 
But yeah, that'll pretty much just determine like how people think of you starting out. And since we didn't answer everything like super obviously good, they're not gonna say you're weirdly too good. But yeah, we just got here and that is a lot to lay on a guy who did just move here. And we have ourselves a farm, and we need to name it. So basically, they're gonna be building a fun land here in two years. But what if there was already a fun land here? They can't build two fun lands in the same area, right? Welcome to Funland Farm. And yeah, basically we're gonna need to see her at the Harvest Goddess Spring eventually. Actually, we do need to befriend her for one of the ending paths. And befriending the Harvest Goddess in this game takes forever. So we should start that early. And we'll make sure that we introduce ourselves to everyone around town too. And there she goes. Oh, right, there's also the Harvest Goddess Cave. Oh, no, not Harvest Goddess Cave. Harvest Sprite Cave that's, like, right next to our tool shed. So we can go see them at some point. There's not much to do in there, unfortunately. There is one really helpful thing that the Harvest Sprites do. But we'll get to that later. Anyways, let's take a look around the farm. This is the farm. So our field is over here. This is basically our entire field. It's not that big, but crops in this game are only one tile uh, large. So we can actually plant quite a bit here. We don't want to plant too much though, because watering it all is going to be a pain. Anyways, let's uh, before we do any planting, let's take another look around. Over here is basically our storage shed. All of our tools are actually stored inside the house. This is like where our, I guess you would call them achievements and treasures that we find will show up. It's honestly not that important, and I don't know why they made such a big thing on the farm. But we'll take a look in there once we actually get something to put in there. Uh, over here is the Harvest Sprite cave. This is where they live. If we ever need anything of them, we can just come here and they're usually here. In their weird mushroom house. Like I said, there is something really helpful that they do later on, but right now we can't do anything with them except talk to them. Alright. And then over here is where we just get water for our uh, watering can. So let's do a bit of planting. So to plant in this game, it's like every other Harvest Moon game. We just need to use a hoe to till the soil. Actually, wait, how many seeds did I start off with? I started off with... Uh, four potato seeds. Perfect. So let's get those planted. And then we'll get them watered. Oh, I don't have any water. Let's fix that real quick. So early on, money is actually not going to really be coming from crops and farming, because it actually takes a little while for our farm to start producing money. There is a way to make money early on, but we'll get to that later once it actually becomes relevant. For now, though, uh, let's go check out the rest of the farm. There is still one more screen to this area. So over here is basically our animal area. Our chicken coop is right there, and our barn is right here. And we have this giant field where we can feed our animals and cut down grass or fodder. I'll worry about that later once we actually have animals to take care of. So yeah, this is our barn. We can hold up to three cows. Like I said before, there are no sheep in this game. Only cows and a horse. So we're going to be getting plenty of cows. And over there is our chicken coop. We'll take a look in there later once we have chickens or something that we can do in there. Uh, for now though, there is also one more thing about the farm. If you notice, we don't have a dog. Unlike most Harvest Moon games, we don't start off with a dog in this game. If we want a dog, we have to basically tame one ourselves. And to do that, we need to make sure we put food in the bowl every single day. Unfortunately, I don't have any food on me. Once we get some food, I'll make sure I feed the dog. And the better food you put in there, the faster you can tame a dog. We're going to want a dog eventually, but early on it's not super important that we get one. 
Anyways, and also I'll explain how to actually get an ending to this game later, once it becomes more relevant. For now though, let's start taking a look around the town. Let's go this way. So over here is the grocery store. Oh hey! Our very first villager! Hi there! This is Tim. And he's gonna call us bro, which is weird because my actual brother's name is Tim. But yeah, he'll become important later on. Honestly, every single villager is pretty important to one of the uh, ending paths in this game. Well, most villagers are important to an ending path. Anyways, this is the grocery store. We can buy, uh, what is it? Like, food here. And we can also sell stuff here, because in this game there's no shipping box. If you want to ship stuff, you have to actually go to the store and sell it by hand. It's not as bad as it sounds, because you don't get, like, a ton of stuff you can sell at once. Well, you do, but it's a lot faster to do it this way. But there is one thing I want to grab while I'm here. I want to buy an egg. Just one egg, please. For a trick later on. Anyways, this is Ronald. He owns the general store. Grocery store. I always call it the grocery store, even though I'm pretty sure it's a general store. Either way, this is where I'm going to be selling a lot of stuff, because they tend to accept everything. Because not every single shop accepts everything for sale. Like, we can't sell vegetables at the tool shop, because they don't sell vegetables. But usually the general store pretty much buys everything. Anyways, oh, one more important thing. These are herbs. I'm going to make sure I keep them. Herbs are kind of really, really helpful in this game. For one thing, they're good food. Food is actually kind of important. Well, not kind of, it is important. Also, we can hit this tree with a hammer. Let's do that real quick. But yeah, if you notice in the upper left there, ooh, bugs. So yeah, hitting trees with hammers tends to either drop fruit or bugs. Bugs are interesting in that their only use is to befriend Tim. No one else in the village will take bugs as a gift. Only Tim. And Tim will also pay you for them. So let's give this to him real quick. So yeah, gift giving, just hold a thing and talk to a person. You can only give a person one gift a day. Oh, normally he pays me for bugs, but I guess not today. Never mind. It's only like one or two gold, or like five or ten gold, so it's not really that big. And we see our first bachelorette. This is Katie. She works at the bar. Slash cafe. We'll get to know Katie eventually. Anyways, let's keep looking up here. Oh, right, herbs. So I was saying, herbs are important because if you notice in the upper left with our stamina bar, uh, there's the actual bar part that's our stamina. If that runs out, we just can't do anything else. But around our actual character head is a green ring. And as you do stuff, it'll slowly start turning red. If that hits about halfway and you go to bed with it like that, the next day you're likely to wake up sick and you'll lose an entire day's worth of work. So yeah. We need to always make sure that that thing is at least halfway filled before we go to bed. Also, this is Wallace. He runs the cafe slash bar. Which just happens to be right here, by the way. It doesn't open until noon, and I think it's closed on Mondays. Yeah, it's closed today. We'll go there some other time. But yeah, like I said, if we want to restore the uh, basically our fatigue bar around our character portrait, we have to eat herbs. That's pretty much the only thing that will fix that. Oh, yeah, a stray dog. Who's a good dog? I am not gonna hit you with the hammer. You can, and it's a horrible thing to do. But eventually we'll adopt a dog ourselves. Uh, over here is the church. They're not open yet. Yeah, the character involved with the church is not here in, vill in the village yet. So we'll come back here later. One thing about- oh! Hi! Okay, I was going to say this is the Goddess Spring, but they're going to introduce it for me. So yeah, basically to talk to the Harvest Goddess, you need to give her something by throwing it in the spring. There she is. No, I've literally been here for four hours. Give me a bit more time. Alright, she's just going to explain gift giving. Pretty simple. 
Harvest Goddess here actually likes vegetables the most, so as long as we give her a vegetable every single day that we can, we should be able to befriend her in a reasonable amount of time. Also, she's a bachelorette in this game, so we can't marry her. Also, yeah, don't come here before 10 or else she'll get angry at you. She literally will not accept gifts if you've given them to her before 10. Well, she'll take them, she just won't get any friendship from them. Also, yeah, don't throw anything she doesn't like. Usually I just like to stick with vegetables and fruits. Oh, speaking of vegetables and fruits, we got some berries over here. But yeah, we'll have to make sure we come here every single sunny day and give her something. Also, it's important that it's a sunny day. If it's raining, she'll also get angry at you. Uh, there's a rock here that we can deal with later. We can't do anything with that right now. Over here is A, the Funland Company headquarters in the area. We'll deal with them later. And over here is the mine. Let's take a look inside the mine real quick. So yeah, the mine in this game is... interesting. Okay, the first thing that you have to know is right now we're actually not allowed to do any mining. Oh, where's my... Oh, I have my hammer equipped. But yeah, unfortunately, the game won't let us mine right now because technically this is Funland property and we're trespassing. But, there's also this guy. This is Rudolph. He works for Funland. So yeah, there's a way to make money in this game, and that's through part-time jobs. There are a couple in the game. Three, I believe? No, four. There are four part-time jobs we can do in the game. This is one of them. It's mining. Come here nine to one, and we can mine. Unfortunately, I don't think we can do any part-time jobs in day one, so we'll have to come back tomorrow. So mining is actually probably one of the more important ones that we want to do early on, because once you do that enough times, he'll let you just mine normally. Which we kind of need if we want materials to upgrade all our tools with. Let's see, over here is a weird little field that doesn't actually do anything. I don't know why this is here, but we're not going to be coming here very often. This is the carpenter shop. This is the carpenter. His name is Woody. Wait, no, there are five part-time jobs we can do. Yeah, I know. They're going to be tearing the town down in two years. Is that even allowed? That seems like it would be highly illegal. But yeah, Woody has a part-time job we can do eventually, but not right now. No, I live here now. Anyways, yeah, these two are Woody's apprentices. Kurt and Joe. They're also involved in an ending. Honestly, every single character in this game is involved with an ending path. And over here is their actual shop. And another bachelorette. This is Gwen. From her, we can basically sell, like, materials and stuff, like stone and, uh, well, not stone, but, like, wood. But we can also buy upgrades to our farm. We're not going to be getting these for a while. Eventually, I do want to get at least the doll. Actually, no. Also, expanding the chicken coop would be important. But yeah, we're gonna need lumber and materials. We can't get either right now. Or sorry, lumber and gold. We'll deal with that later. Alright, bye Gwen. But yeah, like I said, she's another bachelorette we can go after. So right now, we pretty much just went around the outside of the village. We went this way, and now we are here. So let's head down here now. Off to the plaza. There's also the horse track, but we actually can't get there yet. That's only accessible on horse racing days, which happens every season except winter. So yeah, we can't go in there at all right now. We'll go there eventually, though. Alright, so over here is... I think it's called Clove Manor. It's the mansion. This is where... Oh, there she is. This is where Dia lives. They're rich. Well, she's rich. Let's go take a look inside. Because there are also two more residents of the area. There is Martha here. Hi, Martha. She's nice. 
She's also involved in another part-time job we can do eventually. But like I said, day one, we can't do anything right now. And she also buys stuff that uh, you can basically sell her food. I am not gonna sell her any of this stuff yet. I need that egg for something later on. And there's actually one more resident of the villa. There she is. This is Gina. She's the maid here. Alright. But that's Clove Manor. There's also an upstairs room, but we'll go look at that later some other time. When actually someone's actually in there. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Barry. Alright, but let's go over here now. This area is the beach, I believe. Yes, yeah, the beach area. Yep, here we go. This is where we can do a lot of fishing. Unfortunately, we don't have a fishing rod yet, but we'll get one eventually. And this is Parsley. He is good with plants. Uh, there's Katie. We already met her. And then let's take the southern exit of this area. Because that leads us back to the uh, plaza. And then, ooh, wait. I'm going to grab that. Another good rule of thumb in this game is to take everything that isn't nailed down. It's usually good to at least have something on you. Because befriending villagers is actually really important in this game compared to other Harvest Moon games. Like, if we don't befriend anyone, we're pretty much guaranteed to get a bad ending. Well, not guaranteed to get the bad ending, but not a good ending, basically. Anyways, this is Bob. He owns the farm here. Well, ranch. Yeah, it's called a ranch, because they don't raise vegetables. But this is basically where we're going to be buying most of our animals. And all of our animal products. So eventually I do want to buy a cow, but it's 2,500 gold. So it's going to be a little while before we can afford that. We can also get chickens and all the fodder. I don't think you can make chicken feed in this game. You have to buy it. Fortunately, it's super, super cheap, so that's not going to be a problem. And fodder. Fodder we can just get from our own field. And Bob, we can actually do another part-time job with him. That one is also really important and actually really good. It's also my favorite of the part-time jobs. Just because you make the most money out of it and it's really easy to do. But we'll worry about that later. And this is the last part of the town that we can explore. This is where the tool shop and the flower shop are. Let's take a look at the tool shop first. This is where we can go to upgrade all of our tools. And it's owned by Lewis. I like Lewis, he's nice. But yeah, we can, uh, what is it? We can buy all of our tools here and upgrade them. I do want to get the fishing rod eventually once I have enough money. But honestly, all of these are really helpful. Except maybe the bug net. Actually, uh, yeah, honestly, the bug net is kind of useless, but it's there. Everything else, though, pretty good. And the AP medicine isn't the best either. Also, there's one more thing I forgot to mention about this game. Uh, so there are delivery requests here and at the bar. Basically, these are long-term goals that you can try to meet. So basically, if we can deliver these before the deadline, we get that money. There is absolutely no penalty for failing these, by the way. So I'm just going to grab all of them. I'm probably not going to get them done, but we'll have them. But yeah, these are available here and at the bar. They're actually two different ones. So we want to make sure we check both of them at like the beginning of every season. Uh, deliver, that just means deliver the request. Actually, what was that second one again? Moondrop herbs and fairy dress. Okay. And then wanted items. Basically, there are certain items that each shop will want that they'll pay you extra for. So if we had any of these, we could sell them for a bit more than usual. But I don't have any of them because I can't mine yet. Oh well. Anyways, one more shop to go. Oh wait, more herbs. This is the flower shop. Here is where we buy all of our seeds. So let me see, what do I want to buy? I kind of want to get a bunch of fairy dress, honestly. Let's get a bunch of fairy dress. And there goes all my money, but that's okay. And eventually I do want to invest in other types of seeds, but for now, that'll have to do until we make more money. And it's owned by Gina over here. Or sorry, not Gina, Lila. Why did I call her Gina? Wrong character. Lila is also a bachelorette we could go after. 
I'm also not sure which bachelorette I want to marry in this game, because unlike the original Save the Homeland, you can actually get married in this game. But that's not until way later, so we have time to figure it out. There are actually still two more bachelorettes that we haven't met yet, but they should be coming in the next couple of days, I believe. Anyways, let's get those seeds planted real quick. And then we'll probably call it a day, and an episode. But yeah, as you see as we work, our fatigue is going down. Well, I think it's called weariness. Our weariness is starting to go up, I guess. So yeah, we make want to make sure that always stays above halfway when we go to bed. So let's get these planted. Let's watch the dog glitch out for a second. Hi, doggy. Yeah, unfortunately, he's not our dog yet. Oh, that reminds me, I should put some food in the bowl for them. So yeah, to adopt a dog, all we really need to do is just make sure the food there's always food in the bowl. And eventually it'll let us pick up a dog and keep it. There are actually multiple types of dogs in this game. There's one more type, I think. Basically, whichever dog you pick up is the one you keep, so make sure you choose carefully. But that's not going to be an issue for like another month or so in-game. Anyways, I'm going to put some berries in there. There you go, doggy. He's not going to eat it while we're around. And before we go to bed, there's one more thing I want to do. So I bought an egg earlier, because the old trick for Harvest Moon still works. If you can get yourself an egg, just uh, put it in the incubator, and you get yourself a cheap chicken eventually. It's actually a lot cheaper than buying our own chicken. But that's it, gonna be it for this episode. So, next time on Let's Play Harvest Moon Hero of Leaf Valley, we're gonna see about doing some part-time jobs to start raising some funds. You can't really save the village without, you know, having money. Being poor is gonna be an issue. Also, here's our calendar. Harvest Goddess Festival is on Thursday, or on the 11th, and the race day is on the 22nd. I think it's always on the 22nd. Well, anyways, that's it for this episode. Till next time.